this isn't me. I mean, it is, but not really. This is an AI redub video of me using a service called HeyGen. It took this original video and boost the reputation of any brand and made me speak Spanish. Reputación de cualquier marca de manera. Overall, pretty cool, but this got me thinking. There are a lot of videos of me on the internet, like a lot. And this use case is completely benign, but it isn't always. This AI generated video of Elon Musk. Today I would like to introduce you to Quantum AI. Inviting people to join a completely BS crypto scam costs an 82 year old retiree $690,000. Cybersecurity company Surfshark found that since 2024, nearly 900 million has been lost to AI deepfake scams. That's bad, but there is a bit of hope. They're coming out with deepfake detection and anti-fraud technology. New AI detection companies promise that they can tell you whether or not a piece of footage or an image or a sound clip is authentic, what's real and what's fake. They're part of a relatively new product category called trust as a service and it's all about verifying reality. So I wanna test it. I'm gonna give a real AI deepfake detector three levels of challenges. A viral Elon Musk deepfake, an AI generated clone of me, and a subtle manipulation so small, even humans might miss it. Along the way, I'm gonna to talk to two deepfake forensic experts to help me understand exactly how these tools work. I'm pretty confident uh, we may fail. Here's what's at stake. As AI gets more sophisticated at faking reality and it gets harder and harder to trust even our own eyes, can these detection tools actually do what they're promising? And if they can't, who's even left to tell us what's real and what's not? Francesco, what's up? How's it going, man? Hey, Shamal. We're good here. What about you? This is Francesco Cavalli, co-founder and COO of Sensity, a platform dedicated to deepfake detection since 2018. I'm, I'm not a native English speaker, so... What is your native language? Italian. Oh, okay, okay. I was going to say, I feel like I, yeah. I should have trained an Italian version of me to have this conversation with you, maybe. <laughs> so, Francesco, we are going to be doing our very first challenge here. I am going to be uploading two deepfakes of Elon Musk. How do you think Sensity will do? We have been investigating Elon Musk related scams for a while and uh, we were able to intercept many of them uh, online and of course we took advantage of them for training our models so maybe we succeed. I'm ready to jump in and, and put you guys to the test today. <laughs> yeah, let's do that. we managed to, to spot the synthesis and manipulations. So, you know, it, it's really encouraging, to be honest. Today's detectors, like Sensity, train on thousands of real and fake images, video clips, and audio clips. There isn't a single smoking gun for detecting a deepfake. Instead, detection spans three major categories. The first category is pixel level analysis. This is about zooming way in to spot clues your eyes might miss. Deepfakes give themselves away with blurry or flickering edges around a face, weird lighting, hair or eye reflections that look like they don't match the rest of the scene, or lip sync and lip movement that's just off. And you could be the next millionaire. The second category is audio waveform analysis. I don't need to tell you what a normal human sounds like. You just know. Stuff like timber changes, imperfect breathing patterns, micro pauses. Well, detection algorithms look for that. If it's not there, it's a problem. For the voice analysis, 93% suspicious. The average human-like voice, the naturalness scores in a range between 0.65 and 0.81, but this voice is scoring 0.84. So it's outside the boundaries. The third category is metadata analysis. I'm gonna let a different expert explain this one. How is the file packaged up? Is this packaging consistent with an iPhone or is it consistent with an open AI? So this is Hani Farid, by the way, who's a professor at the UC Berkeley School of Information and a digital forensics expert. If you go to open AI right now and generate an image, it will insert metadata with a signed credential that says this is generated by us. That's the good news. The bad news is I can rip out metadata and I can take that out if I know that it's there. In other words, files have little digital signatures that detectors can use to trace their life cycle. Together, these three categories make up the gumbo of how detectors do their thing. 
And here's the thing. Well, this tech is being used to fight scams. The same underlying AI tools can be used to build businesses as well. It's not all about catching bad guys or being one. HubSpot put together a free guide on how to use AI agents to spot high ROI opportunities, build proof of concepts fast, and even land your first clients. It covers five paths from start to finish, no gaps to figure out on your own. Check it out in the description below or scan this QR code on screen. Who knows, maybe you'll be the one building the next deep fake detection platform. If that's the case, you'll definitely wanna stick around for this next part. Because here's the problem. A lot of the tells from voice and audio analysis were most obvious three to seven years ago when deep fakes were not as convincing. But advancements in AI and therefore advancements in deep fakes mean that these three giveaways are more subtle and require more finesse to detect. So let's up the ante. We're gonna upload a control of a real video of me and then a video that's been completely generated from scratch using technology that was trained on real footage of me. Did you know there's a marketing channel that analysts expect to have 4.7 billion users by the end of 2025? The important thing about email marketing is making sure your personalization matches your campaign goals. And this is kind of meant to replicate, you know, what deep fake actors might be doing in the wild, tearing down a video of someone, training a model on it, and then using that to do something uh, potentially bad. So let's see, how is Sensity going to do? It looks like it's tagged the real video as suspicious. So the pixel analysis and the voice analysis when it comes to detect deep fakes are the, uh, let's say, the most important checks that we can use in our platform. Both of them are returning as a valid response, which means there are not signals of AI synthesis here. I mean, it's, it's good to know that I'm not AI. The thing that is weird here is that this has been captured by Adobe Premiere multiple times and then, you know, spit out through the Adobe Media Encoder. The video is not AI generated, but, you know, there is a small, tiny editing pattern that we can investigate here. So this correctly tagged the control video as real, but that it's been edited in Adobe Premiere. Let's see how it did with the variable test. I couldn't trick you guys. Yeah, it's about 92% confident that the face is, is fake. 93% confident that something wacky is going on with the voice. We see your face and your body flagged as AI generated and there is a tiny piece of background, again, flagged as uh, potentially AI generated. So here it essentially is strengthening the idea that this is an avatar, it's not a real person. I thought that maybe I could I could sneak this one by you guys. Okay, so we've been using one deep fake detector company in this video so far, Sensity, but they're not the only ones out there. Deepware, Reality Defender, and Deep Media are just a few of the big players in the commercially available detector space. A lot of deep in these names. Now, I wanted to test a variety of deep fake detectors for this video, but there were some problems with that. Deepware just said, scan failed every time I tried to upload a video. Reality Defender works via SDK and API, which I do not have an app for, I'm very sorry. Resemble.ai's free detector only detects audio manipulations, not both video and audio. And Deep Media didn't let me log in at all. So it's just Sensity for now. And no, this video was not sponsored by Sensity, but they were down to offer me a free account to make this video. But here's the thing, this is bigger than deepfakes. This is about that curious term you heard me mention earlier, trust as a service. The idea of moderating content and protecting users has been around since the late 90s, but things really started to change around the mid 2010s. This era saw the rise of companies that focus on cybersecurity, identity verification, fraud protection, and online review authentication. And this isn't small potatoes. The global digital trust market is poised to grow from $97 billion globally to $229 billion by 2032. That's a ton of money all going towards one idea. What's real? And now it's literally a product or service you can buy and subscribe to like cloud storage or Netflix. Blows my mind. Okay, so now I really wanna stump you, Francesco. I am going to show you two different videos 
one of which is real. The other has had a very, very, very subtle manipulation made to it. When it comes to detecting, uh, you know, small portions of uh, videos or images, in general, detection models are, I think, are still struggling a little bit. So if it's a really tiny detail, I'm pretty confident uh, we may fail. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Well, let's, let's see if your intuition is right. So even though it says it's suspicious for the face manipulation and the voice analysis, it's like, no, this is actually real. Same thing as what happened with the last control. It's just picking up that it's been edited in Premiere. Okay. For the test. So for the voice analysis, it said it's real and there's no voice in this clip. So there's not really much for it to go off of. The face manipulation check, it says that it's real. The AI generated content check though, it says with 99% confidence, this is fake. And the only thing that's changed between these two videos is literally just like the color of my shirt. I thought you guys were gonna get stumped here. We have the 99% of confidence, but as you see here, we do not have any explanation. So the solution is not able to point out which frames are allegedly manipulated. This is the certificate. It's the final proof that this content has been algorithmically created. It's, uh, in my opinion, it's a strong result, but it could be better. Yeah, Francesco is totally right. It is hard to stay on top of these deep fakes. An article published by the Reuters Institute for a study of journalism found that in February 2024, openly available AI detection software can be fooled by the very AI techniques they're meant to detect. Maybe that method won't fool Sensity in particular, but the findings were clear. Even just cropping the video or adding a filter was enough for a variety of detectors to say that a fake video was real. And that's just the easy stuff. There are now adversarial attack tools that are designed to game detectors on purpose. They'll tweak a fake pixel by pixel until it passes through. Like we're using AI now to trick AI detectors. Importantly, Francesco does push back on this. That's not possible doing that kind of attacks if you do not have access to the technology that you want to fool. Maybe it's not as easy as academic paper suggests or Sensity in particular just has a really robust solution. But the money though is where things get even more challenging because it's not making this any easier. Hani told me that his company, Get Real, raised a series A of $18 million. Sounds like a lot, right? Compare that to the 29 billion that was poured into generative AI between 2022 and 2023. Detection startups saw around $200 million in the same window. That means the advancements in novel AI image and audio generation are financially leaps and bounds ahead. To be honest, there is nobody that can keep up in real time. Let me say most of the times, processors and cyber criminals do not use commercial tools. There is a black market, a parallel black market of uh, generative AI tools specifically designed for cyber criminals. Even more troubling, new scam techniques find ways to avoid being run through AI detection in the first place. Take a Roop, for example, a global engineering firm. An employee joined what they thought was a pretty regular live Zoom call with the CFO and other familiar looking colleagues. Everyone seemed real, but that CFO was actually a scammer using real time deepfake technology. The firm ended up losing $25 million on that call alone. Here's the thing though, traditional detection tools scan uploaded files, uploaded videos, images, or audio, not real-time FaceTime or Zoom calls. So those traditional methods would have been useless in this particular attack. Now, Intel's fake catcher is specifically designed for real-time deep fake catching. And Hani was actually more optimistic about real-time catching than the rest of the industry. Now you could say, well, that detection should be hard because I've got to detect in real time, but the adversary has to create in real time. In fact, they have to create at roughly 24 to 30 frames a second, whereas I can wait five seconds to detect that there's a bad guy on my call. So I think in real time situations, I think we have a huge advantage. So there are some tailwinds and some headwinds, but more than any technical failure or budget gap, 
Here's the real reason why deepfake detectors will always get beaten. They have to look backwards. These systems are trained on fake content from the present and past. The minute a new kind of deepfake emerges, it's invisible to them because it's not a part of their training data. And so while a company like Sensity might do really well against an unsophisticated actor like myself using commercial tools, the real bad guys are cooking up something that literally these companies have never seen before. I think we, we are going to be reactive for a while. Maybe in five years, I may be completely wrong from what I'm saying today, but I think uh, for the next uh, few years, we will chase, chase and chase generation models. So returning to our other original question, if the tech can't keep up, who's left to tell us what's real and what's fake to safeguard us from harm? I think there are two answers. The first is legislation. At the federal level, the Deep Fakes Accountability Act was introduced in 2023 to hold malicious deep fakers accountable and mandate transparency for synthetic media. Meanwhile, in May 2025, the Take It Down Act became law, requiring platforms to swiftly remove non-consensual AI-generated intimate content, including deep fakes, often within 48 hours. That's not necessarily financial scams, but that still is important. Finally, in 2025, this year, a bipartisan bill was reintroduced in the House and Senate called the No Fakes Act, meant to specifically protect individuals from fraudulent replications of their voice or likeness. These laws aren't perfect tools, but they do help codify what is currently a digital wild west. And second, us. Because deepfakes can evolve faster than detection tools, each of us has a role to play. Journalists who verify before they publish. Platforms and regulators who enforce clear rules and act quickly on abuse. Everyday users who pause and ask, is this really real? This won't erase the incentive for bad actors or make the problem disappear, but it is a step forward. While it is true that we have been able to manipulate photographs for a long time, over a hundred years, for the most part, when you saw a photograph or an audio recording or a video recording, we were more or less on the same page. And you just simply can't say that anymore. That, that, that time is gone. And so what does that mean? Yes, I'm worried about the grandmas getting the phone calls and being having their life saving stones. I'm worried about the CEOs losing tens of millions of dollars because of deep fakes. But I'm equally concerned with how this technology is ripping us apart as a society and a democracy. And that's not, uh, uh, that's worldwide. You are seeing this impact in every corner of the world. And that is extremely worrisome because when we enter that world where we don't trust anything, I don't know where we are as a society. For more business and tech stories like this, subscribe to The Hustle. And be sure to check out the AI Agent's Guide for proven methods to build a high ROI AI first business.